The out-of-this-world movie Interstellar is having an impact here on Earth. It's being called one of the most realistic science fiction films ever. Thanks to its visual effects and the storyline, the movie had a good weekend, came, coming in second at the U.S. box office with $50 million in ticket sales, just behind Disney's Big Hero 6. But how accurate is the science behind the film? That is the question today. Neil deGrasse Tyson runs the Hayden Planetarium in New York. You'll also know him from the TV series Cosmos. Professor, welcome back to Studio 57. Thanks, thanks. It's been a while. Thanks for having me back. Well, we thanks. always like to see you. This is definitely in your wheelhouse. So is it thumbs up or thumbs down? Well, I don't, I don't give opinions about things. I don't care if anyone agrees with me or not. But you don't? As, as a scientist, as an educator, <laughs> I, feel, I feel dutious to share dutious. with people what, what science they could look for. If you choose okay. to see the movie, here are some cool things to notice. Okay, how realistic is it? How about that question? Well, they're going through a wormhole to another part of the galaxy, so, so I mean, it's science fiction, all right? Okay. So, so uh, but we know about wormholes. We know the mathematics of them. We don't know how to make one yet, and plus they're kind of unstable, and if you go in, they might collapse. So you have to, that's the science fiction part of it. There's a wormhole sitting there allowing people to leave Earth and travel much shorter amounts of time to go to another part of the galaxy. And the difference between a wormhole and a black hole, because last night you tweeted, you said, they explore a planet near a black hole. Personally, I'd stay as far the hell away from black holes as I can. <laughs> well, so, it so if you're near a very strong source of gravity, from Einstein's relativity, we know that time ticks more slowly for you than it would elsewhere. So if you're near a black hole, weird things go on, and they captured much of this in the film. One of the executive producers of Interstellar is a professor professor of physics at Caltech, and his name is Kip Thorne. By the way, one of the robots in the movie was called Kip. So, yeah. coincidence? Yeah. I don't you know. What's I, the difference <laughs> between a black hole and a wormhole? Yeah. So, a black hole, you fall in, and you're not coming out ever. Okay. Okay. All right? A wormhole has a lot of the similar physics to a black hole, except it's a portal to another place in the galaxy. Okay. And so, you can use it, in principle, to travel great distances much faster than if you otherwise sort of took the, took the detour. Mm -hmm. And uh, in, in Star Trek, they kind of do that, where they're warp drives. They warp space, and they can travel oh, that's much... That's a wormhole. Well, 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 at the time, they didn't have that vocabulary, and if they did, that's surely what they would have called it. But uh, in, in Star Trek, you want to get across the galaxy during the commercial? Mm -hmm. <laughs> you need some way to do it faster than the speed of light. It's nice to see scientists as the stars in a yeah, movie. Yeah, yeah. Five, the five lead actors, all marquee actors, all play scientists or engineers. Did you get film. tingly watching it, thinking those I, are my people? <laughs> These are my peeps, and, no, and, and, and they were. <laughs> they, and, and typically, when there's a scientist, they're like wire-haired, lab coat yeah. donning, and you don't care if they're in love or if they have kids. Yeah, they're very Here, robotic. They, uh, uh, in Interstellar, full family relationships okay, were explored. We're showing this tidal wave part. So if you've seen the movie, I found that really hard to believe. That was where they kind of. I thought they a little bit jumped the shark a little bit well, on the tidal wave. Okay, so it turns out that the, if you're in orbit near a black hole, mm -hmm. which is what that planet was, you, there's very high tidal forces. And so the, the way they pr pr portrayed it as this sort of singular spike, mm -hmm. that was a little hard for me, but there would be extremely high and exaggerated tides relative to anything we would experience on Earth. And one thing about tides, you think of tides as coming in and out on the shore, yeah. that's not what's actually happening. There's a tidal bulge in space and the planet rotates you in and out of that bulge. So it looks like the, the wave is coming towards you, but you are actually moving in and through and out the other side of the wave. And they did it twice. Sounds as the like planet you like rotates. the movie to me. I, no, I'm just, I'm just saying, if you're going to see the movie, yeah. there's just some things to notice. Okay. That's no spoilers, no spoilers. Can yeah. we talk about this, what happened in Texas over the weekend? Because there was this um, fireball that streaked across the Texas sky and was even picked up on a camera 500 miles away. Do we know what it is? Oh, yeah, yeah, it's, just a, it's an asteroid. A meteor coming in and exploding in the atmosphere. It happens all the time. Earth plows through several hundred tons of meteors a day. Mm -hmm. And that often happens in daytime, but you don't see it as much mm -hmm. because the, it's, it's bright out. I love how you go, oh, yeah, yeah, that's uh, just, just a meteor. Yeah, sure. <laughs> but some people say their houses shook. Do, do we know whether or not it, it hit ground or not? Okay, so if their houses uh, shook, and from the image, it looked like it exploded in air. So when you're going 40,000 miles an hour, as many of these do, the closing speed of, an of a meteor and Earth, it, when you hit the air, it's like hitting a brick wall. It hits, explodes, 
you see the light first. Got it. And then the sound wave comes later. So you can get a shock wave, it's a little mini sort of sonic boom. So if you had to name one good science fiction movie, it would be just one. Would my life? What yeah. I've seen? Yes. Oh, just uh, one. Uh, uh, I would say Contact. Contact. The, the, the oh, Paul okay. Sagan story. Yeah, Sagan. Right. That one st you. sticks with me for a long time. Okay, thank you, yeah. Mr. Grass Tyson. Always a pleasure. Okay.